Welcome back, guys. It is the Brothers Geek Out podcast, and thank you so much for joining in, guys. I've got a special guest on today. I've got Zach Star on. We've been following each other on the socials for a while, and I was like, you know what? We need to have a conversation. I've been watching his reviews, and yeah, like we've been interacting on and off for the past year or so, maybe? Yeah, yeah, I'd say that. Awesome, man. Awesome. Uh, Zach, t- tell the people a little bit about yourself. Right. Um. Yeah, so so my name's Zach, um, and I really got in into this as as a way to communicate with people in terms of my sort of things I like. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, so I I like the you know the the whole sort of book stuff, um, anime and that. Um, and I'm not much of a a people person, so. I thought create a a TikTok account um and just sort of find a way to interact with other people online. Mm-hmm. Um and it 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 really just it really just started out of just looking at sort of people doing anime edits. Um, I didn't come across a few TikTokers who did reviews for movies, TV shows, stuff with Marvel and DC, and I think that's when whole um community really caught my attention um and then from that i just i I slowly went into to reviewing um disney plus shows like you know like the the moon knights and the Mm. miss marvels and yeah i i sort of grew confidence in that and now i started to to push that barrier a bit more so i'm doing other sort of tv shows other sort of movies and yeah, yeah. Um, I didn't, I didn't know. I've, I've, I've been on it for just over a year now, and I'm, well, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm sort, of, I'm sort of liking it at the moment. I want to push even, push even more. You know, it start maybe, uh, sort of build up a YouTube channel or something, and just see, see, say where we can go from that. No, oh, that's great. It's great to hear, man. It's great to hear like how the community has kind of really put this all together. Because I joined yeah. TikTok probably two years ago. Okay. And I didn't I didn't realize like how much of the community kind of back each other up, support each other. Yeah, I mean, it yeah. does get toxic sometimes, but oh, I try course, and, of course. I, I try and stay away from that. Uh I just have a different view on things, I suppose. But yeah, I just love how how it's brought out a lot of people out of their shells a little bit because I was exactly that yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I think um through through sort of my my early teens i tried to sort of mask the fact that i was into these sort of things um and quite recently i've sort of come to the realization that you shouldn't be afraid of what you're into um Mm -hmm. and just sort of sort of embrace it like i know i'm i'm 27 at the moment so trying to do this I feel like at such a late age um I feel like some people might think you know why are you doing it at, at so late in your in your years um but why not you know if if, if this is exactly. something you like and you're passionate about th- th- I believe there's no age limit to it no 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 dude look man I'm 41 I'm 41 years old dude and we started the podcast when I was in my thirties, so there's 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 no age to the the how can I say pop culture brings this youth inside of yeah. you, yeah, which which keeps us young, bro. Like I'll, I'll be honest, if it wasn't for the love of pop culture and comic books, I don't know what would keep me young. It, it keeps me connected to my kids as well. Like it's like I'm not. I'm not that. I don't want to say it in a bad way. Some people just forget their passions and things that they love. Of and, course, and, yeah. And you age yourself, you know, d- during that period because you lose that piece of youth in you. Like yes. I, I, I saw it in my dad. Like you know, after he hit sixty, I've been cutting his hair for like twenty five years, and then I was like, "Dad, your hair's going grey, man," and he was like, "Yeah, I'm, I'm old. I'm over sixty. and I was like, "You've had like thick black hair." The, the longest time ever since I've been cutting your hair. But he was like, I'm I'm actually getting, I'm old. I'm, I'm actually old now. 
Yeah. But he he's still young at heart. I see him with the kids. I see him. You know, he we grew up on pop culture because of him. He doesn't like admitting it. We're coming from a strict Muslim background. Mm-hmm. He he really doesn't want people to know that he's the movie guy. We got all those things from him. Uh, so bless him. But yeah, it's keeping that youth in you and, and and pointing out. I don't think age has anything to do with 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 passion, bro, and, and and things that you love. So it's great to see that you're putting yourself out there, man. Because most of the listeners that listen on the podcast are, are people that are trying to find, like, kind of finding it hard to get out of their shell. Uh, yeah. And hopefully, you know, the podcast when we do do it, kind of inspires them because you could do it in any format. Now we we've got so much platforms now to put yourself out there. <clears throat> I, you probably did this as well like you did the first couple of videos and you were like nah I'm not feeling this I'm not feeling this yeah but then yeah, you kind of yeah. get a gist of it and I suppose you make content that you're gonna like because if you go back to watch your own videos that means you love what you do bro oh of course yeah yeah um the, the other day I was sort of just scrolling through through previous posts and I can see within myself how much I've grew into this from sort of stuttering or like I'm um, in an R in. I mean I, I know I still do that now, but Sorry, bro, it's, not as, <laughs> it's not as frequent now. I've sort of yeah, I've sort of been able to become stronger with with obviously with what I do, a bit more confidence. It and that will happen. I mean like look both me and my brother we suffer dyslexia. But my brother man, like I've seen him grow on the po- podcast. It's it's amazing to see somebody's progress because even though you're with somebody all the time and since he moved he moved about 10 years ago. Uh, you know, here's a guy who doesn't like to be on camera. Here's a guy who doesn't like to speak about things to the way he articulates himself. Now I'm like, dude, allow your, all these words you're using that I don't understand, man. Like he's, he's come to that point in his, in his lifestyle where he was like, you know what, this podcast has helped me get in front of people. I can, I can do presentations. I don't stutter no more where I'm the guy who still goes through all of that. So it doesn't yeah. really bother me. I think it gives, it gives a bit of character to yourself as well. Oh, of course, yeah, yeah, it definitely does. Yeah, definitely gives you characters. But uh, what's your go-to anime, though, dude? Um, I've I've always loved uh Naruto. Yeah. Um, since as a kid, loved that. Uh, I I I really like Demon Slayer at the moment. Okay. Um, I'm All not right. I've not finished the third season yet. I've got two episodes left, but I really love that. Um, then you got you got lots of Dragon Ball Z. Hmm. Um, I like Jujutsu Kaisen. Um, I don't know where I stand with One Piece at the moment. I've recently started to watch that. I've 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 heard a lot of sort of mixed reviews on it. Hmm. Um, it, it people have said it's really good, but it's just really long to get into at the moment. Um, and it's just just sort of things like that. There are there are other enemies, but I can't think on. The- my head what? that's all right bro that's okay no, that's all right i mean like my i'm going old school because my anime was like it is dragon ball z but then i go back to i don't know if you remember manga which was like fist of the north star Akira. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah 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 so that's yeah, that's yeah. like my era of it was like yeah i did Tank i Police. did like at, at that time i think it was um ghost in the shell yeah yeah ghost in the yeah, shell stuff, as well stuff yeah, like yeah, that yeah. yeah so uh that's like th- those are stuff that i still watch now i mean i think my brother just recently got into Naruto and he's going for it. My youngest, he's a big fan. I mean, the youngest brother, he's about 30, but he loves Naruto, man. Yeah. Like he, he lives and breathes that, man. He's like, bro, he goes, it's just deep. It's deep. And when he tells me it's like it almost is. a thousand episodes, I'm like, what? So I've got <laughs> like a massive catch up to do one day uh, and, and go through them all. But uh, I mean, with, with you getting yourself out there now, like when it comes to... I know we had a deep conversation and you sent a really nice message recently about our take on, on the flash now. Yes. Yeah. I mean, everybody has their own opinions and how they see things. I think the message that me and my brother was trying to relay was like the, the, the view of the artist, I suppose. Yeah. The view of the artist. So, uh, I mean, I know originally, I think even when I came out of the first screening, when I watched, because they told me it was an uncut version. Like, so, you know, the scenes missing, right. the graphics are not 100%, uh, so okay. you can't review it. Uh, so I was a bit gutted after because I didn't understand the stylistic look that they were going for. But I saw an unfinished version and I was like, okay, I still enjoyed it. But when I did see the finished version, I was like, I swear, man's just lied to me and just 
they fixed up a little. I know what they the scenes they fixed up yes. and the scenes that they added on there, which I didn't see. Which I kind of liked the uncut version. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So I, the yeah uncut, I you mean. So the uncut version. If I if I let you know, there's certain scenes in the movie that they they didn't have in that version, but they didn't have the George Clooney scene. Uh, yes, I, I've I've heard about this. Yeah, so they left it uncut, like just cut it. It basically just says... Uh, oh, right, okay. He picks up the phone and then you see somebody's foot come out of the car and it's, yeah. and it's like, who the F is that? And I was like, all right, that's a nice ending. But don't get me wrong, I still fanboyed when I saw George Clooney. I mean, yes, my guy yeah, it, it, still it was, gets it, the slack. <laughs> it, it was great. It was actually great. I, at, at one point, when I watched it, I totally forgot that he played Batman. Yeah. I totally no, forgot it, because it, he's he's, uh, he did. Personally, I thought he 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 did a good job. But when you're comparing him to um, sort of Christian Bale's Ben Affleck's, mm. um, he's it, it's just not as memorable as as them sort of characters and no, like no. the way they portrayed man and that. Um. But yeah, no, it was it was it was nice to see, and I was I, I I was totally confused when it came to that ending because that is the way, the way I see saw it. It wasn't his his timeline. Mm-hmm. Um, but then I heard your and your brother's takes on the the end credit scene, um, and it it just it just clicked into place. It it totally made sense. Yeah, you have to you know because when I originally when I saw it, I was like. Hold up, he said he he saw other Batman. So he basically rectified his mistake to come back to his timeline. Because I didn't hear it the first time around. I actually saw it. Somebody put it on TikTok so I could listen to it again. And then I was okay. like, oh, he basically went back in time again to rectify the mistake of putting the tomato on top can. Basically, his dad's back in prison again and all the rest of it. So he right, yeah, yeah. The 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 consequences of time travel. And even the butterfly effect of changing even a little thing is still going to cause yeah. a ripple effect in the future. Uh, but yeah, no, absolutely. I, I'm a fanboy, dude. So it's hard because I just end up loving everything. That's the problem. Uh, I don't. I don't think that's a bad thing. I think from 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 listening to your review, it it made me realize the one thing I feel like people sometimes forget is how much you enjoy it as a person. Mm-hmm. I know, I know. We 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 sort of do this to to critique movies and that, but that's right. I think sometimes we get a bit too carried away with ourselves. And like me, me personally, I sometimes I forget. You know, it's all right to enjoy these films. Yeah, yeah. I think, I think it's the I it's, I don't know. It's it's something that people have forgotten to do now, and and we do live in a spoiled society where we get all of this content, bro, and it's amazing. Mm-hmm. Like I'm. We're not just getting anime products. We're getting the Marvel, the DC, and all the other projects that we get. Like, yeah. the amount of stuff that we get pumped out now. And when I was a kid and I was 20 years old, you know, we, I was lucky enough to to witness the first Spider-Man movie with Tobey Maguire and was like, oh, my God, we're heading to a future where I'm going to see shit like this. Like, this, this is unreal and amazing. Like, so, like, yeah, for me as an avid comic book reader and see it on the big screen, yes, Stories are not going to be 100% perfect, but I've come to yeah. the cinema to get away from the reality that I already live in and just get a break for two and a half hours for my mental stresses. Yeah, uh, yeah. Let no, me just I, get I, transported. I'm... Yeah, and I think that's where people have actually literally forgot that. And like I, me and my brother, we always say it. We're not film critics, bro. Uh, they put us as journalists and press, but we're not. Yeah. We're just fanboys that love movies. It's, you know, pop culture... You know, my parents, they both worked full time. So what do they do? They left us with the VCR player. And, mm. you know, here's us man's watching Rambo and Commando and Terminator <laughs> at like, you know, eight, nine years old thinking, bro, this is nuts. Like this, this is fantasy and science fiction to a to a whole different level. I mean, I grew up uh, to uh, Western movies. My dad was a big fan of like spaghetti Western movies. So Clint Eastwood was just oh, on okay, the TV yeah. all the time. So like, I love, I love visuals, bro. So like, from where we've gone from, you know, early cinema to what we've come to now, it's an amazing journey, bro. It's like cinema has expanded. I mean, we're gonna jump on like Spider Verse now. Yeah. And like, 
My my favorite film of the last decade was Mad Max Fury Road. Great film. Yeah, so that film for me, the way it made me feel in the cinema, I think I went and watched it six times. And it still gave me the same buzz every time. And I'm like, how did George Miller, this guy's like 83 years old, make a film to make me feel like that? Because I felt every, like it, we haven't had a movie like that since I think the first Terminator where I, I felt on the edge of my seat. I'm like, man, they can't stop this thing. He's, he's still coming. Like it was such a good, it was a horror. I think Terminator, me and my wife think Terminator, the first one is a horror movie. It's always kept to your edge. Yeah. So that's what Mad Max Fury wrote it for me. But this decade was Spider-Verse, man. Like I adored the first one, but this, this is like the Empire Strikes Back of it, yes, the Spider-Verse. Yes. Like it, it is, yeah. It, it, I mean, what was your feeling when you came out of that screen and when you watched that film? Oh, honestly, I was... I, I was so speechless. I remember when when we did the um sort of the end scene where um he's he thinks he's talking to his mum, um and it's panning up to him being outside the window, and I'm, I'm I just remember being on the edge of my seat because I I felt like it was such an intense moment, and then when you find out when he says, "Oh, I'm Spider Man." And she has no idea what he's what he's talking about, and then it's just honestly it, it it blew my mind of like what was going on. Yeah, I didn't I I didn't know what what was real or not, and then yeah, obviously the 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 whole sort of sequence after that I just thought was absolutely amazing. Nice, no, really... they're they're really smart, man. Like the way they did yeah. that, like. Yeah, if if you have to watch it a couple of times and you notice more different things like the color changed of that mm. universe as well, yes, and stuff yes. like that, you're like, hold up, man. But it's deep, man. It's deep. And the thing is, I, I even though people see Miguel as a a villain, I'm like, nah, man. That guy's just trying to rectify stuff that's it, gone it, wrong. Exactly. You know? Yeah. Uh, yeah. People will find him in different ways, but I was like, nah, this guy is just trying to keep the peace. You know. Exactly. Cat, yeah. It was it was unreal, man. I mean, the animation itself, the soundtrack, you know, like the, the the love and effort that goes into something like this, bro. Like, I remember the first one. I came out in tears. Like, you know, I think I can't remember. Yeah, I came out in tears. My brother was like, "Why are you tearing up for?" And I was like, "Bro, that was just beautiful because that's such a it homage was... to the character." Daddy. Yeah. Yeah. Daddy, What's up? Who are you talking to? I'm talking to a friend. What's her name? <laughs> hey, press it down. What's her name? His name? Yeah. Kibla. Kibba. Kibba. Yeah? Mm. Bless you. Yeah, that's a lovely yeah. name. Can I see Yeah. Yeah? Sorry about that. <laughs> that's all right. That's okay. <laughs> all right. My daughter always runs in. So luckily, she's, <laughs> she's at school at the moment, so... She always comes in. I remember, I, like I was telling you last time, so I was doing, you know, when the Batman came out, I was lucky yeah. enough to do like a round table with Matt Reeves. And basically, I, this is like half her bedroom, half my little studio space, but it was okay. in this corner of the room. And yeah. the interview's going on, and there's other people on, and I'm looking behind me, and I'm thinking, this girl was boxed in with this little toy piano yeah. And it's like slammed it in the middle of the room right behind me and I'm like oh shit and I'm the guy who's going to ask the next question and she's like daddy I need batteries and I'm like <laughs> oh you're killing me right now I'm in the middle of a conversation with Matt Reeves here uh, bless him like really cool uh, really cool uh, that's you great know, do your do your dad duties and yeah. he answered my question you know like so like there are some some people I'm like I still can't believe I've got to, with the, if you put in the hard work and the persistence into it and be continuous on it, uh, you'd be surprised of the, the outcome. And yes, sometimes it, 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 it takes, it takes time, but I've learned now because we're, we're coming from a society where we're on views, likes, you know, how many people sharing and the rest hmm. of it and stuff like that. Yeah. Once you take that motion out of your head and just be consistent with the work you do, opportunities will come. Yeah, yeah, come. yeah. You're, 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 you're definitely right. I think um, earlier this year I came across like a stumbling block where mm. I was just working too much, and 
trying to put out content was just was just hard and I'm just going through the back of my mind is is this all worth it and that um but I've managed to sort of change some things around now and now yeah I feel like I'm more dedicated than ever to try and try and put 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 more quality stuff out and just just see where where it takes me in the future it will man it will you put the time in uh, and like I like I put this post out and I, I, I was just being silly anyway but like the past couple of weeks and I, I work full time in marketing and you know everybody's always watching my posts and they're like you know you're lucky you get all of these opportunities you're lucky 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 and it was like I, I don't know it triggered me mm. it's like why would you say I'm lucky for and I'm quite upfront with like I think I suppose that comes with age and my tolerance level now like yeah. just be upfront and straight with me like why, why do you think I'm lucky and they don't know what to say. I know sometimes the main reason is like, how's this dude getting to do this cool stuff? And the main thing is, is because I genuinely love what we do. We don't get paid for this. You know, yeah. monitor, like trying to monitor your podcast and all the rest of it. I don't get paid for that, man. Come on, man. I'm I'm still hustling and bustling to feed my kids, pay my mortgage, keep everybody happy in the house, you know, uh, yeah. and enjoy the little things that I can do for myself. But it's hard work, man. You 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 have to put the graft in, you know. Uh, there course, are days. Like, yeah. I, I've I've said, you know, I need a break. You know, have your breaks. It's so important. Have your break. Take a month off social. Take a couple of weeks off. Like, it's so mm. important because that that you come back refreshed and you'll have a better timing system to do things. But I was like, I wanted to actually get the real answer of the people to say, why do you think I'm lucky for? Yeah, because luck's got nothing to do with this. It's it's hard work and persistence. And exactly. Yeah, yeah. And I, that's I, I what feel, you need to understand. Yeah, yeah. And it's 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 a shame people like that don't understand. But it's it's we're in a society where you can have so many. You can have thousands and thousands of people congratulating you where you got to, but you'll always focus on that small minority percentage of people saying, "Ah, oh, you know." you're lucky to be getting this and that and mm. it's 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 I I, I guess I I could sit here and say try and try and ignore it but I guess it's something that's easier said than done yeah I suppose it, it it's it's a it's a it's a weird process man definitely a weird process it's uh I feel like in my in my lifetime you know I've had to always work twice as hard than other people to get to the opportunities and do the things I want to do. Because for some people it's easy, simple. You know, they it's and and it's just the way the system is. I, I can't, I can't, there's nothing for me to change there. I have to do twice as much to 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 get the things that I we because we all deserve it. Yeah. We all deserve it. But if you put the work in, then you know the rewards are are, are you know sweet, bro. Course, <laughs> Absolutely yeah. sweet. Yeah. The, the yeah. rewards are sweet. I mean to this day like you know if i look back at the past five years and we only started sharing like socials for the podcast again two years ago we only started putting the podcast on other streaming platforms two years ago we only just stuck to youtube we never really pushed it out there yeah but i realized that to to get noticed and to for other people to see it You've got to put it across all platforms. Exactly. Yeah. So yeah, that's what you got to do. Jump on the TikTok. Jump on the Insta. Drop. You know, Twitter. I hate Twitter. I don't understand it, but I just post stuff up on there randomly. So yeah. like, it's just putting it out there. I think people have the fear of still not understanding what they're capable of doing, and you could do amazing yeah. stuff. But we're at a place now where one post can go viral and it could get you noticed or something. Yes. Or they people see consistency in the work. I mean, Warner Brothers. I mean, no praises to them. I, I'm, I'm, I always say I, I feel lucky with them, but I'm not. They see the hard work that I've put through, and they've seen how much of a fan I am of the comic book. So, almost like an ambassador for DC Comics, which I, I'll cherish that for the rest of my life, man. Because yes, you know, when my the first comic book that was passed over to me from my uncle, my youngest uncle, was a Superman comic book. And ever since then, you know, yes, I, I love Marvel and I love all of them, even anime comic yeah. books. I love them all. Yeah. Just, just the, the creativity that goes into it. So, yeah, it's, you know, amazing opportunities will come and it's just putting the work into that. And it's not luck. So keep doing your work, bro. Yeah, yeah no, I appreciate it. It's great. 
honestly, keep, keep, that, keep, yeah. keep at it because like it is disheartening at times. And bro, I'm bro, I'm 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 happy to say if I get five likes on a post, that's five people that have really connected to a, a piece of your work that yeah. Could you imagine yeah. meeting? You know, uh, I met T, uh, Tyro. Yeah, uh, couple. Of, I've met him a couple of times now. Uh, really great guy, but he put something in perspective for me when I saw him last at the Star Wars celebration, and we got to chill out properly. And it, absolutely awesome guy. Every time we see each other, it's always love. Uh, and I'm proud of the work that he's put into his work. But he was like, "Could you imagine?" me getting you know anybody getting 100 likes on their post could you imagine seeing those 100 people in front of you now asking you questions jumping at you and the rest of it mm. it'd be claustrophobic yeah. man it'd be hard it's that's it hard be, work. yeah yeah so like he put it's, it's it's a nice way of putting it like if bro if i get five likes on my thing i'm happy because that's five people i got to connect with because now we're in a state where we're constantly it does affect mental health like I mm. never thought social media, a platform that's on the internet, can do that much damage to people. Yeah. Like yeah, that's yeah, a no, crazy, crazy right. time. Like I've that's nuts, bro. Like it still it still jars me. I'm I'm a mixture of both because I'm a hybrid. I'm from the old school, but the new school as well. So yeah. it's like I've had to adapt and, and realize what social media does. And like my brother, he always says it on the podcast, post and ghost. Don't interact. If it's negativity, you try and push away from it. Uh, you're gonna get hate. People are gonna hate. So yeah, yeah. There's, honestly, there's, honestly there's, I think I think that's great advice. Actually, yeah, it is. And 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 to speak on Tyrell quickly. He was yeah. the main reason why I started doing what I was doing. Yeah, I remember he he, he was one of the first posts I saw. I can't remember what what show he was reviewing. Yeah. I knew it was a Marvel show, and ever since that, I thought, yeah, this this is great. I'll you know try and do stuff like that. And last year, Comic Con, um, the one in October, I got to meet him, and nice. I was I just said to him, "Thank you so much." I I think I went through a bit bit of a fanboy moment. Um, I was just really I was just so so nervous and that. Um, but you know, it it it, it was great to finally finally meet him. It was oh, just bless. Yeah. Now, cool guy, man. Props to him, man. Hard work is, yeah. that he put to put put in. And who wouldn't fanboy? I fanboyed as well. I was like, dude, man, your videos are amazing, and that the key details that he picks out, and it's like unique to anybody else's stuff. You know what I mean? And but he he put is having like getting. Usually, when I see him at screenings, it's a quick hello, goodbye. You know. Yeah. But Star Wars Celebration, I got to we we got to spend a good couple of hours and chilling and. And like understanding that his his work routine and how how he how it is, and he goes, it's not easy. It's, people need to know that because it does it, it affects everybody. Mm. You know, it's, yeah. it's hard work that goes into it, and everybody keeps thinking, I don't know, man. Everybody thinks it's easy. Everybody thinks it's easy, and it's yeah, of course, yes, yeah, it's, it's 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 not it, the the amount of sort of hard work, time, dedication that goes into these sort of things. I think it it it, it might surprise some people. No, definitely does. Definitely does. Definitely does. Uh, what's your next movie you're looking to watch, bro? Um, uh, I think I was. I can't really remember where it was. I can't remember the name. The name of where it was called now. Um, I've got a few. I think it's Asteroid City. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. You got uh, um. Obviously, you got. Oppenheimer in the summer. Yes, that's right. Yep. yep. Um, Barbie. My missus wants to go see that. So, Sorry, dude. I'm 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 gonna go watch it as well. It's all right. Yeah, yeah. We're all gonna find. We're gonna. We're, it's gonna. It's gonna be an interest. I think this summer is gonna be really interesting because. Yes. It's, there's gonna be. We. I think this year with movies, we've got. <coughs> we've got so much that is coming out. We've got different genres of movies coming out. Yeah. Like, you know what movie surprised the hell out of me was uh, uh, Ben Affleck and Matt Damon's Air. Yes. Yeah. Bro, like I'm a sneakerhead, so I, I love my sneakers. So it was interesting to see because they work well on the screen. Bro, but I was like, oh, my God, like it's one of my favorite films this year. One of my favorite films this year. I don't know why. It's just I suppose it's great screenplay. It was. It, it was it was really good. Yeah, I just loved I, lo I love the way that 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 kind of panned out. I mean, Spider-Verse kind of. 
I think overall as a movie stole the show this year. It's going to be mm. hard to top that. Very hard to top that. Yeah, I feel yeah, like yeah, yeah. because they worked a very long time on that movie and they really took their time. They delayed it. The visuals are stunning. Soundtrack. I mean, good, great script. Like it was I mean, great it was... script. Like I don't know how some like I I was I've been watching loads of interviews and uh from the directors, the writers, uh, even the composer. And it's amazing, like, the amount of time that they put into something like this where they're like, you know what? Let's delay it a bit longer. Let's 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 work on this a bit more. Mm. Uh, the art style is intense, bro. Like, uh, the, the, the villain of the week, Spot. Is it Spot? They're calling him Spot? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, like, the concept of making such a small character, even in the comic books of how villain of the week he was, to make that character such a big threat is is unreal. Is 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 nuts because they've picked a character that not many people know of. And yes. it's an it's an amazing writing process to make this guy such a big threat, and then entwine it into the madness of the multiverse. I mean that canon event scene, bro. I was like, this is this is this is nuts. Like I can't believe they absolutely put all of those easter eggs in there spoilers if you guys haven't seen spider-verse i don't know where you guys have been but spoilers we've been spoiling it anyway but that canon event scene was just like a really nice way of putting you know how they how they represent in the multiverse and i know multiverse is a big story for everything at the moment now everybody's doing it but yeah unreal absolutely yeah unreal. yeah, yeah. It, it was great and and one thing i liked about the spot as well was um his animation style especially when he sort of unlocked his full potential when he got you you saw how much darker he got i thought yeah, it, it yeah. was it honestly he looked he looked really great yeah they 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 the, the art styles they picked in that are just amazing as i said originally on my well my brother hasn't seen it so uh g man you don't want to hear this podcast bro <laughs> you gotta wait uh, my brother comes back today so i'm looking forward to seeing him today so uh we'll probably catch it on the weekend or the week after but he they they banned it in like the uea a, 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 but like dubai and like, saudi arabia yeah. and stuff like that uh i mean the law of the land as we respect it mm, yeah uh, but yeah I, I don't see i didn't see anything to be offensive about though it i believe it was i think Gwen had something to do with a flag representing transgender. Oh, I don't right. know if it was if it had something to do with that. Ah, uh, you're right. It, but that doesn't really influence anybody. It's just somebody that supports it doesn't. the cause. No. Yeah. So, I mean, it's a big and larger conversation. I mean, I don't know. As Lord of the Land, that's that's how me exactly. and my brother put it. Lord of the Land. Yeah, just got to respect that, and that's the, what they that that's yeah. what they want to do. But yeah, exactly uh, that. Yeah, no, his art style was sick. So simple. It was. It was. So simple, like scribbles, and, and you made it look like a masterpiece. Like, it's such a tribute to the artist in the comic books because uh, the artist that uh, worked on Gwen Stacy, uh, Spider Gwen, recently put up a post, and I've been following his work for ages because he's a, he's a mixed artist. He he uses watercolours. He, he uses uh, different traditional ways of doing artwork, and... If you read the Spider Gwen comics, they like water art, like water paintings. Uh, and he was so happy on, on how they represented it with the scene with the dad, and when she mm. goes to hug him, and then the, you see the blue water mark. Yeah. And I was like, like as an artist myself, like what an amazing way to be tributed to to have that come up on the big screen like that in a movie that's you know massive at the moment. Uh, but all the art styles, they 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 pay tribute to everybody that's worked on those on the Spider-Man universe. Like, what a trip, man! I always put myself in other people's shoes because I'm like, I'd be giddy. I'd be like, man, that's just that's absolutely amazing. Like, yeah. Anyway, that's just me, man. That's just me. I'm excited uh, for other people, which I love. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I I I, I get where you're coming from, especially with a. Uh... Like you said, an artistic background, you can really appreciate sort of the time and effort it goes into these animation styles. Yeah, definitely, man. Definitely. I mean, I remember when I first saw Fist of the North Star, and that's like the first ever violent like anime that I've ever seen. 
and I was like, these guys hand like you know when you watch Walt Disney cartoons and stuff like it's all hand drawn like the backgrounds mm. are matte painted like the the amount of time and effort that goes into it I mean Fist of the North Star the character Ken Shiro he does this hundred hand punch and I remember trying to replicate that when I used to draw it and I'm like how did these guys do this like even when you watch anime now it's like I know it's a mixture of different programs now but they still have to hand draw some of these characters. It's like yeah. Dragon Ball Z, bro. Like that's intense. The amount of battling that they went through and the power surges they went through, and it's like yeah, it's, yeah, this is nuts, man. Like it's amazing to see like the process of it, and I love watching those documentaries because it just gives you a deeper level of like what 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 went into that. But yeah, amazing, absolutely amazing, absolutely amazing. Uh, my other question for you was. Like jumping into this world of, of of putting your thoughts out there, I mean, was it was it quite difficult at first to get out there? Yeah, yeah, it, it was because um, we live we live in sort of a, a world where you know not everyone's gonna agree with you. Mm. Everyone's gonna have different opinions, and that's as and it's great. Everyone does. It'd be a boring world if everyone had the same opinion. No, of course, of course. But I feel like the way some people portray their opinions, um, I guess could play some sort of effect on you. Mm -hmm. So I guess I, I yeah, I, I guess it is sort of it sort of played in my mind. Oh, you know, what was if I gave my thoughts on this film, and I'm just getting a lot of back from it. Yeah, yeah, I guess sometimes it, it it will keep me a bit reserved. But I think sort of listening to other people's sort of opinions on this sort of topic, and they've been doing this way longer than I have, you sort of just pick up that, you know, for like you and your brother, for example, when, mm. he's, when he said, you know, just just ghost and ghost thing, just... Try, try and ignore it. I guess mm. I guess that's that's something I'm sort of trying to work on. Yeah, just just put I think it's hard not to. We're human beings, so yeah. some things are gonna hurt. Like I remember some of the comments I was getting back then when Miss Marvel came out. And I don't I didn't understand the hatred towards it. Yeah. Uh but that that comes with like systematical issues anyway. Mm. And people not accepting the fact that we're going to get diversity on a different level now. And, you know, sometimes it could be forced and the woke, you know, the woke regime and the rest of it. But, you know, for me, I was like, man, I was emotional because I was like, you know what? I got my nephew saying that he's got a superhero that looks like his mum on the screen. You know, that, that changes the concept of everything yeah. because we grew yeah. up with characters that mainly was Caucasian. So, which never, ever bothered me. So, I'm I'm from an era where it didn't really bother me because if you can identify yourself with the character in the comic books or a movie, it doesn't matter what culture or race they're coming from, there's a deeper connection there. Like I used to cosplay Doctor Strange back in the days. This is when the MCM Comic Con was like run from a hotel like conference room. Oh, okay. And like I'm talking about 15 years ago, ages ago. <laughs> and uh I remember a couple of people always say, Oh Doctor Strange ain't South Indian, you know. And it really put me off cosplay because I used to do Doctor Strange and Wolverine. Those are my characters back then. But, but I, it was always because I related to them in the comic books in some sort of way, their battles and what I was going through mm. as a teenager as well. Uh, and those are characters that I wanted to represent. And I think people forgot that, that you could represent a character that you want to, you'll always find a deeper connection with them yourself. But there are always the systematical issues that people will bring along with that. But I mean, later on, I've, I've broken out of that era now where i'm like mm, you know what you, you that's fine you can say what you want it doesn't bother me no more they'll have you'll have your times where it will because you're like shit man i was only trying to put my point of view out there yeah but i think you, you're if they can put toxic energy out there and you're trying to bring a positive vibe to it you're you're 100 more than right to man so yeah 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 you're, you're, you're totally right and and just just, just speak just speaking quickly on 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 the whole yeah, Miss yeah. Marvel topic, it, it was yeah. it was nice to see 
yeah, like 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 you said, it was nice to have a Marvel character from an an Asian background for you know people like me and you can, yeah. can relate to. And I thought I thought that was great. No, it's good. Yeah, I mean, it, listen, the show is. You know what? I absolutely enjoyed the show. I've got nothing bad to say. I yeah. I saw it for what it is. And I think that's what people, as you said, going to the cinema have forgotten. That if you're going to watch something, you're just going to watch it because you, you've gone to get away for a bit. It's like Secret... Have you seen Secret Invasion? Yes, yeah, I have, yeah. So that first episode was wicked, bro. Like, yeah. I literally was like, hey, this is good. Like, it reminds me, it's giving me uh, Winter Soldier vibes. Exactly, yeah. And that's like my favourite Marvel movie, hands down, Winter Soldier. Great. Great. That's probably going to cause me beef later on the podcast. People will be like, no, Endgame is not. Endgame is a great movie. Infinity War is a better movie. But Winter Soldier is like, I suppose the espionage and the spy and I love that stuff. It was like a different concept to what Marvel were doing. Yes. They, they go yeah. with a formula, don't they? And the Russo mm-hmm. brothers brought in something different. But getting back to the point, which was, where was we? Sorry. I, I always go off point. Um, We were saying about... Uh... Miss Marvel. Yeah, yeah, Miss Marvel. Like you know, I loved it for what it was. It brought culture to the MCU. Like, uh, yeah, I did an interview with the 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 Asian Bon Jovi band cover. Okay, uh, a cover a couple of I think it was like a a couple of months after. Bless him, man. Them guys are amazing. Shout out to the the Bon Jovi guys. You guys are absolute the Desi Desi Bon Jovi guys. Uh, I had I think four of them were on, and you know, I, for me it was like they were like um like. They were like really grateful to be on the podcast. And I was like, guys, for me, I'm speaking to somebody from the MCU. So like I'm overwhelmed right now. You guys are heroes to me because it's like you guys are part of that MCU story. Like for me, that's the biggest thing in the world. Like you've given me the opportunity to speak to to you and, you know, you're bringing your talents up onto to, to Miss Marvel. And they told me about the show and how, how much they worked on it. Like I was like, I was quite proud to I was to see it, you know. Marvel has taken that jump to, to 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 put a Muslim family up on there as well. Yeah. But just to see the cultural like things to go through and the parts with the dad, bro. Like you know, us being dads, I was like, man, getting me all emotional, man, because I'm I'm gonna go yeah. through that later on in life. Yeah, you know yeah, I mean? of course. She's yeah. gonna she gonna go through my TikTok and podcast videos and be like, dad, this is cringe. Yeah. How yeah, you been exactly. doing this? This is cringe. Yeah. But. It's a legacy. Like I, I feel like for you, jumping on this journey right now is a legacy for your son. So of course, like yeah. he, you know, God forbid anything, man. Like you know, I always say it. Like, and I tell my wife as well. It's like, I don't know my time here. Like, so I'll do as much as I can. But everything I do now, and it's never. Yes, we do things for money. We have to work. We have to pay bills and the rest of it. That's to sustain the the reality we have here. Mm. But for the 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 mental part of it is like the legacy you leave behind for your kids, the memories you leave behind for your kids. Yeah. Like, I think that's the biggest reward and payment you can have because they'll look back at that and say, you know what? Dad did this. Dad did that. They've got a, a library of videos to always remind them of you. So, of course, yeah. I think the way we, me and my brother, I think eventually when we started the podcast to where it's got to now and the listeners that listen now, is that leave your legacy, guys. Even if you find it cringe, listen, man, your kids, family members will always have something to look back at and laugh and, and remember you by it. You know what I mean? Yeah. So yeah, I think that it's important as a dad uh, that that we leave behind what we can. And then, yes, the stresses of life and money and the rest of it, you know, it plays a big part. I mean, I saw my mortgage go up this week and it was like, like, what am I going to do to to make that extra little paper? Like, okay. you know, guys, yes, we, we get to do cool stuff and you'll be able to do cool stuff soon, bro. But you realize it's not, you know, you got to travel into London. you got to do this. you got to do no, none of these costs are covered, guys. Like, it's not, it's not free. These studios, they don't pay you. It's either you go or you don't go. You know what I mean? So it, it, it's, it's down to you. But I've kind of seen it in a way where, you know what, I'll, I'll, I'll put that little extra bit of money into the stuff I love. Mm. that the kids later on when they see it you know hopefully i get some cool dad points in the process uh 
but legacy man legacy think of it as your legacy because it's your work it's your hard work you're putting into there so you're always scheduling content and 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 watching stuff so that you can review it after uh but yeah yeah just keep 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 keep, keep at it man it's good man I, i've seen more stuff coming coming from your side you've been doing a lot more yeah, what did no, you think I, of secret secret major major. Major. yeah I, I i thought it was it was a very strong first episode Hmm. I thought I thought it was great. I, I I like when Marvel take the very grounded approach mm-hmm. to their projects, and and that's what I got from it. Like you said, you know, this gave me such a Winter Soldier vibe, um, and yeah, yeah. I honestly I I like the um obviously moments on there where it really shocked you. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, definitely. <laughs> yeah. definitely. But but yeah. Oh oh overall yeah. Yeah, really enjoyed it, and I can't wait for you know the two to drop. Yes, um, definitely, definitely. I've heard That's someone fun. say episode two is really good. Okay. Um, well, it's gonna get deeper. I mean, what would? Yeah. You know what? Do I just spoilers, man? I mean, so what happened in the end? Like, really caught me off guard. Yeah. And it's like, what's that? What is that gonna do to Nick Fury now? To because everybody's saying that he should just give up. He's done. You know, I don't even know why he came back to Earth. He should have stayed up on Sabre. Like, they really... I'm kind of... You know, like, we with Phase 4, we got grief, you know, after the blip and, you know, mm. traumatic stress. You know, PTSD, we got most of the characters that are going through. But we never yeah. knew what's, what, what Nick Fury was actually going through. Exactly, yeah. And that's really good that they hit that concept of, like, this guy was, you know, disappeared for five years. He's come back and he's like, "What the hell is going on in this world?" And he still hasn't. What's the word? Recalibrate uh, when you recalibrate your your mind into yeah. doing something. He yeah. hasn't. He hasn't been a hundred percent. No, he hasn't. And, and 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 you can see that from when mm. when 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 he arrived back on Earth. You can see, you know, he he wasn't the same as it as he was pre blip yeah. No, that's right. That's right. All right, man. Cool, man. Listen, uh, thank you for your time, dude. Uh, it's always nice to like catch up with the people that I do online, uh, and it's always nice to hear about your passions as well, and 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 putting yourself out there because it's a it's a big thing when you start doing that. So you should yeah. be proud proud of what you're doing and keep at it, man. Just keep pushing. Uh, yeah, no, I I I I appreciate um obviously being on here, and I just I just wanted to take take this time quickly just to sort of obviously thank you and your brother for for what you do um yeah uh to, if i'm completely honest i don't see many people from an asian background doing these sort of things mm. but to see you and your brother doing it has really really been refreshing to see and it's sort of given me that extra motivation to sort of keep, keep at it Oh man, bless you, man. Good on you, man. But it's uh, it's humbling and overwhelming to hear that. It's uh, and that's all it is, really. Like we, I was, I was speaking to my brother the other day, and it was like, you know, we only want to connect with people, and if it's just the one person we can connect to and inspire, then this is this this is our job done. That's our payment. You've just paid yeah. us, bro. Thank you for that payment. <laughs> like that's the rewards that, that 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 you get from it, and you and you're gonna hear it when. When 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 opportunities start coming your way, when when you start to put yourself out there a bit more, that you're gonna notice it because we were just two Asian brothers putting our perspective on pop culture, and it's something that Kevin Smith said the other day. So he wrote in Nick like when he wrote the story for Nick Cage being Superman, yeah, that you know it was a failed movie that never happened, but that moment he was like pop culture paid me back i remember him saying that yeah yeah so it's like that's what it is for us you know getting these opportunities speaking to people like you and 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 knowing that listen you don't have to hide about your passions that you can put it out there and you have no idea what the universe can bring back to you i mean whether you're religious spiritual you know atheist or whatever the universe somehow pays you back and 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 it has because me and my brother have been doing that, I said, what, 10 years plus? And I think when we met The Rock, when I met The Rock, that was full payment, Jews. Like, yeah, you guys worked hard. There you go. Here's your payment. Like, 
that couldn't be anything bigger than, you know, I've had some great opportunities come up. But it was like, shit, some of this stuff is hard work, man, and it's draining, and, and it's hard to be creative at times. And do I want to put my point across? So, like, yeah, I'll tell you one thing that I did. The podcast has helped me stop doing small reviews. And that's okay. just because I thought I used to do weekly updates and go on uh, TikTok and, and Instagram and do, like, quick one-minute movie reviews. It depends what project it is. I'll jump on it. But yeah. I realized that we're just doubling up on the work that we do on the podcast. So I'll just share yeah. the clips from what I do in the podcast. So I've realized that I don't have to do things. And you don't have, like, I mean, it's just one of my opinions and advices. You don't have to get the content out straight away. You can yeah. do it two weeks later if you want. It doesn't it doesn't matter. Uh, because people still watch it. If people, if your community are watching your work, they'll they'll be happy to see it later on. They, there's no, you've got leeway to do it. So I've learned that because it was getting too much for me. I, I think last year, last year I went to Singapore for my brother's wedding. And I, I told him, I was like, bro, I'm burnt out. Like, I'm doing all these reviews, uploading, this and that, going to these events. Uh, I'm I'm done, bro. I think, if, I think it's time for me to stop this. Like, and with, you know, a four-year-old, and and you know and 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 finding out wifey was pregnant again, I was like, "Where am I gonna find this time, man?" So, I had a break. I took a month off socials. So I went to the wedding, enjoyed Singapore family time. Came back and I was like, "Okay, restructure everything. I need to work smarter, not harder, because I know how, what it's like working full time. I know what it's like looking after a kid. I'm gonna have two now. <laughs> so how, how how do we battle this? But scheduling and 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 content." I don't have to post it on the day. I can post it the following day, or the yeah. you know I've noticed that I can do that now. If your if your community love your work and 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 respect you, they'll respect the time as well. So mm. uh, keep doing what you're doing, bro. It's really good, man. Uh, Thank you. I, I appreciate it. Just uh, it's good to see other brothers out there doing it as well. And you're right because it's it's not much we see Asians doing work like this. I've seen a lot more come up. Yeah. Uh, and, and I, I met this, uh, oh, I can't remember, he's it's a big fan of Cobra Kai who recently followed. I met him at, I think it was The Flash, I can't remember where it was, but he's he he loves Karate Kid. Uh, he's South South Asian, and I was like, man, this is wicked. Like, And he's got, uh, the you know, he's a, he's a young lad. I think he's like 21, but the enthusiasm came into me, and I was like, bro, I'm going to tell you about Karate Kid and you know, how much it meant to me as a kid growing up. So it's amazing to see that Cobra Kai, it's, it's, it's amazing to see Cobra Kai become the next generation's sort of go-to thing to watch because, yeah, you know, Karate Kid wasn't that big back in the days. But it, it wasn't, no. It's become like this cult classic now, which is amazing, but it's, Cobra Kai has brought in new fans to the show. And yeah. it's like yeah. amazing to hear this guy, the way he spoke about it and, the feelings it gave him and he wished he saw the originals back in the days. And I was like, this is amazing, man. Like, and that's, if pop culture can inspire you, inspire you in that way, then, you know, you're always going to find joy in the stuff you love. So keep at it, bro. That's the main thing. Uh, thank you for your message, bro. Honestly, it's overwhelming. My brother was over the moon. So he sends his love as well, man, because uh, I appreciate nice. it. Thank you. Uh, it's like one of those things where, we, I think that's the reason why we ended up starting the podcast was 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 to inspire others and and, and doesn't matter if you I'm in an R and the rest of it I am an R in all my videos, bro. It's just what I do. I I can't stop it. Even at my workplace, they try and tell me, you know, you want to go on some presentation thing. No, like it's just me. <laughs> it's me. I'm. It's where I'm from. I'm. I I don't have a specific. I don't have. You know, people have. We have. We all suffer it. Imposter syndrome. You go into work and you're thinking, you know, if I speak in a different way. Will it help me elevate to where I need to go to? It, to be honest, I stopped giving a shit about that a long time ago. I was like, I speak the way I speak. I grew up in North London. You know, yeah. my friends have this slang. I use these words. I'm 41 years old. I still use all those silly words, but it's just part of my language and what I grew up with. And yeah. if a client doesn't like that, I mean, I'll be straight up honest, like find somebody else. But if you want results, I'll give you results. You know what I mean? So exactly that you just you just i think that we've come to a point now where they've started to pick it up but like my brother he's the best like he 
He's lived abroad for 10 years now, I think 10 years plus. Uh, and I, he works for the Wall Street Journal. And one of my, one of his friends sent me a clip and goes, this guy doesn't, he still sounds like he's from Tottenham. He's never lost his, his, his flow. He's yeah. never had to adjust to somebody else because you're paying me for me. So I'm going to be me. And people will have to either respect that or not. And most people do. And I'm glad that we've come to a point where we, where we're able to do that because I've seen it, you know, people trying to be people they're, they're not meant to be. And people have forgotten how to be themselves and imposter syndrome, you know, that's a whole different level of mental health that, that brings into the equation when it comes to the real life work world that we're in. So mm -hmm. the podcast has helped me break out of that. That's the great. The podcast has that's... helped me to articulate myself in a different way, but you know, I wear my passion on my, on my sleeves, man. People know when they see me, Kibbs is wearing a superhero t-shirt to work. You know what I mean? He's, he's forever. That's him. That's, that's, they've got no issues with that. And I've got no issues with that. I'm not ashamed of it no more. You know, I know how hard it must have been growing up, being bullied about liking stuff like that, and yeah, and and being outcasted. That's the honest truth. Yeah, the the X Men had taught me not to feel like that, and yeah, that's that that's a whole different conversation. But uh, you you keep at my main thing. My message to you is just you know keep keep doing the work. It's good to see somebody, as you said, like us putting out the work out there and doing yeah. that stuff. So uh, I can't wait to see more, dude. I can't wait to see more. No, oh, yeah, I, I appreciate it. And, and, and going back to when, when you were saying um, my next film, I, I, for some reason, the name's gone out of my head, but it's that movie where Jennifer Lawrence is going to be in. Oh, No Hard Feelings. That was it, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No Hard yeah, Feelings, that, yeah. I, yeah, I, yeah. I need to catch that as well. That looks jokes. It does that look good, yeah. yeah. Yeah, it looks jokes. Uh, what's that out already? Um... I'm not sure if that's out that already. Or... I'll have to double check that. That's the Asteroid City. Something else came out today, man. It's bugging me. Uh... What else came out, man? Films 2023. <laughs> you know what? There's so much, man. I've recently watched a movie on uh, uh, Amazon Prime called The Covenant. Okay. With, uh, Jake Gyllenhaal. Yeah, yeah. Guy, R Guy Ritchie's movie. Bro, that was really good, man. That was intense. Was it? Uh, there's like, there's a handful of movies that keeps me, like, like surprised the hell out of me. That surprised me. You know, it's based on true events, so it keeps you on the edge of your seat on, on what people go through. Uh, you've seen? Have you seen uh, Rye Lane on Disney Plus? It's uh, like a romantic comedy. No, I haven't. No. It's based in South London. That's a that's one to watch. I think you'll enjoy that. Yeah, it's a good, good, good. Like, it's weird. I wouldn't. It's a good. It's a rom com, but it's it's really good. I suppose. Which area did you grow up in in London? Uh, East London. East London. Okay, cool, yeah. cool. So you must know Bear Bengali Brothers, man. <laughs> <laughs> Which part of East was that? Um. So, Plasto, Stratford yeah. area. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Yeah, no. Uh, I got loads of relatives down on the sides. <laughs> uh, that's right. When did you move, man? It was a uh, uh, 2018. Was it was it a, a personal thing where you were like, I'm gonna move up up north or? Um, yeah, sort of. I, I think I, I, at the time I was I was with my my partner for quite a while, and mm. I've come to the decision where. You know, if, if we it was it was long distance relationship for for a couple yeah, of years, yeah. and I think we just we just thought, you know, if you want to sort of be serious about this, you know, let's do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, oh, good you on know. you, man. Good on you. Good on you. That's a it's an amazing sacrifice when you're a London boy, man. Massive, massive sacrifice. Massive sacrifice, but good on you, man. You know, for relationship, for family. Uh, yeah, plays a big part, man. Like you know, yeah. I'm in the process I, I, of thinking, what do we do next? Yeah, and 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 she's been she's been a massive support for for what I do. I'm I'm grateful for her for accepting me for who I am. That's and, that's the yeah. best, bro. That's yeah. the best. That's the like that that should fuel you even more, bro. When when yeah. you have that, 
because if it wasn't for my wife, you know what? It's weird, man. Absolutely weird. You know, before I met my wife, if it wasn't, she, you know what she did on my wedding day? She got me a DeLorean. That, <laughs> that was my sick. wedding car. Because originally I was going to go with my brother's, my brother had a three series BMW, yeah. kitted out and the rest of it. And I said, like, I'm not going to spend no more money because these weddings are, Asian weddings are expensive. Oh yeah, uh, <laughs> of course. I don't need, I'm just going to roll up to the event, go in, eat some food anyway. So I just got me in my brother's car. And she was like, nah, yeah. get the DeLorean. And I was like, what? Excuse me? That's great. What? <laughs> She's supporting me from day one, man. So nothing but love for that woman. So like, it's really edged me on, pushes me. Like, I don't think I wouldn't have done half the stuff if I didn't mean If some, because it always, you need somebody like that. Because I, 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 coming from a divorced marriage from before, when I got married when I was 29 or something like that, or 30, it didn't even last that long. But I didn't know where I was headed. Like, yeah. I was like, what do, what do I do? I work in retail. I worked for a uh, photography company. I dibbled dabbled here in different businesses. I had a clothes company. Uh, I did a, uh, had a photography studio company. You know, I, I, I was like, I'm failing in everything. I don't know where I'm going to go next. I, I'm finding this hard. Uh, but that woman has inspired me on different levels, dude. Different levels. And given me two beautiful children. Like that, that love there. That there alone already takes you to another level. So. It's amazing that you get that support, dude. So it's key. I think it is. It really is. People are in your lives for a reason. And it is key because I lost a friend 10 years ago in my 30s. Uh, and it was his birthday yesterday. And and and, and wifey knew I was a bit off. Uh losing 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 a best friend is or well, anybody is like the hardest grief to process. And and she knew she knew that I haven't I have I still haven't processed it to this day. Because I talk to my kids about my best friend. You know, I talk to him like he's still always here with me. So I find it, I, I found it hard to process, but she's come from the background of work she does, the type of person she is, the support level that brings. I mean, when somebody says, bring it, get that DeLorean, that's going to be your wedding car. That's a keeper, man. That, yeah, yeah, that's yeah. That's a keeper. Definitely. I was like, yeah. <laughs> I was like, that's a keeper. Uh, yeah. Everybody said it as well, man. DeLorean, <laughs> what? That's a keeper, bro. And, you know... That's amazing. For me, mashallah, that's, you know, it's been an amazing eight-year journey we've been on so far. And if I didn't have that support, if if, if some... If, you know, some people would say, why are you doing this for me? You're not getting paid for it. But she knows how key passion is. Yeah. And people need to know that as well. That what you do and what you love is going to keep you young and keep you going for the next day to, you know... Some people say, why are you so excited for that movie to come out? It's going to be rubbish. But I'm like, you don't understand the, you know, Indiana Jones. I was getting it the other day, Indiana Jones. Oh, it's going to be poor. It's going to be rubbish, all the rest of it. But you don't know what that brings to me. Mm. As a kid that grew up watching these films and then getting to be at a screening. I never thought in my life I would be doing what I'm doing now, but it was because of the support of my other half saying yeah. Just go do the stuff you love, man. Yeah, it must it must be a surreal feeling sometimes. Oh, it is definitely. It's definitely it's, it's it's weird because I'm starting to reap the rewards of being a fan of films and having my own point of view on it, but being able to share that excitement with others and yeah. knowing that everybody else can get these opportunities because everybody because of that lucky thing that happened. And it's not, you know, if a studio wants you to be at a screen and the studio will, will let you know. And the studios watch. If you're tagging them, if you're... And the yeah. rest of it, they do watch. They do. They'll be like, oh, I like this guy's point of view. Let's get him over here. He's honest. Oh, or he's a fanboy. They're going to get fanboys. How can they not get fanboys? I'm yeah. I'm probably one of uh, the thousands of people that hate Black Adam. It's a, it's a, it's a rock movie. It's Fast and Furious with superheroes. Yeah. What am I going to, ex- you know, expect from... I knew that from day dot. Yeah. You're not getting, like, a, a Interstellar or Inception. Yeah. Or, like, you know, one of those movies where it's going to make you think it's a superhero movie, it's a comic book movie. You know, the guy's worked 10 years to get this out, man. Praise him for that. You know what I mean? <laughs> he got the project out. Yes, it didn't do great in the box office, which is a shame. You know, yeah. DC have had this 
stigma. You know, they think even having Michael Keaton's Batman in there will bring people to the cinema. It's just the toxic fan fans just don't like the vision that it's going with. And it's been messy. I can understand that. But yeah, I just feel like supporting cinema, you for me anyway, personally, like I'm a guy who yes, I get could go to the screening, but I've still paid for it another three times after to watch it because I love cinema. I, I yeah. I'll go to the cinema. It's my it's my getaway. So yeah. Support man. Support is key. That's amazing to hear that. And it's a big move, big sacrifice, man. You should be proud. Yeah. Bless you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I I definitely am. I know I know I've, I've made made the right choice to do do what I did. Even I was I was questioning it at first, but yeah, I've I've not really looked back since. That's good. That's good. how many years has it been now? Um, coming up to f- five years now. Good on you, man. Good on yeah. you. Yeah. Good on you, man. No, that's key, man. That's key, man. That's so key. That's so good. That's so good. All right, listen. I know you got look after little man, and yes, I got to get back to work as well. But bro, honestly, Zach, thank you so much for coming on, man. I'm sure we'll geek out. I think we should do like a the next movie we watch, we jump on a discussion, bro. That would be amazing. That oh uh, yeah, no, honestly, that that'd be great. Yeah, yeah, we. That, I think that would be awesome. So, uh, even if it's Oppenheimer or Barbie, let's talk about it, man. It's, yes. Uh, yeah, uh, definitely. It's the movie world, and it's uh, no, it's grateful to have you on. Keep doing the hard work you do, man. Thanks for jumping on the show. Where can the people find you, dude? Let this is your time to shine now. <laughs> <laughs> right. Um. So, I'm I'm mainly on TikTok. Um. I have I've got Twitter. Um. It's the same as Zach Star. Mm-hmm. Um. And then I'm on Instagram as well, but that's Zach Star dot nine five because someone's already it. Um. <laughs> yeah. They're, 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 they're really my really my socials. Yeah, cool. I'll put the guys, the links are in the description. Go follow this guy's journey. Uh, he got a great view on his films uh, and, and reviews on, 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 on the shows and anime and everything. So make sure you go check him out. Uh, when you're down in London next, dude? Um, if it's not to see family in the summer, I definitely want to try and make Comic-Con in mm-hmm. October. Cool. Um and I saw I think the day the day before Comic Con they've got this into the Spider Verse orchestra thing. Book your tickets, man. I'm going. I'm 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 and yeah I do I do need to jump book on your that. Tickets. I, I, yeah, book your tickets, yeah. man. I uh I, as soon as I found out I booked two tickets, man. I was like I I'm gonna Thursday. I think it's on yeah, the Thursday. Right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Right. So I'll probably, I'll probably just do like a really long weekend at. Yeah, yeah, why not, man? Do it, man. If you do go to it, let me know. It'd be good to catch up in person. Uh, oh, my God. That's going to be amazing. I, I saw, I love going to the orchestra, sorry, the movies and watching it with a live orchestra. Like, it's a whole, yeah. it's a, it's an immersive, different feel. Like, I missed I missed that on the Batman one. I was I was kicking myself about that because that, was that sounded insane. like a massive experience. It is, it is. It, it takes you out of the world of, like, you're living in that movie now. It's like, I've seen... What have I seen? I've seen Indiana Jones, Raiders of the Lost Ark. I saw Back to the Future. I missed the Black Panther one. Uh, I did the Joker and I did the Batman. And it's it's an immersive experience, you know, watching a movie in that sort of way because yeah. you're getting stuck into the film because the soundtrack's just... The soundtrack's amazing anyway. Yeah. Uh, Michael Cicchino absolutely smashed that. But it's not even that. The, you know, you look at the scenes and you know when the when the Batmobile goes off the first time and the penguins look in, the yeah, soundtrack yeah. just goes intense and you're like, this is nuts. Amazing experience. Yeah, book your tickets, dude. I think they're like 35 quid or something like that. Oh, cool. All right. Yeah, man. so it's not extortionate. Yeah. If you want to sit at the front, then yeah. But oh, yeah. Yeah. I've got mortgage space, so I've got to keep finances <laughs> down. Uh, but yeah, all good. No, listen, uh, I get carried away on here, man, and it's always nice to have a good conversation. Uh Grateful, thank you. Uh, and thank you so much. Back on the show again as well. So, uh, and we'll catch up, man. Definitely. Thank you for thank you so much for this opportunity. By the way. Ah, you're welcome, man. Like it's it's always nice to have fresh blood on 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 the channel because we we do these geek out sessions with everyday. I want everyday people to come on here and be inspired and 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 know that we're we're all part of the same community. We're all part of the same stuff that we love, and you know. 
I think it's nice to share that with the listeners and the people that watch the YouTube channels. Uh, I'm happy to have anybody come on and just share their passions, man. And have a, we had a good conversation. So if we can, yeah. if we can vibe off that, yeah. that's the main thing. That's-